Hello everyone, welcome to Body Bags. I'll be your reviewer for today. I'm Lonnie from Horror Heaven 77 and uh, this is a Rob Zombie movie from 2009. Same, and no, it's not H2. I talked about that one already. But uh, this is a Rob Zombie movie from 2009 that uh, even though I've talked about a few Rob Zombie movies on here, I've never talked about this one. So I thought I'd go ahead and, you know, may as well go ahead and discuss it. This is a movie you never really, too, you never really hear too many people talk about this one. So I thought, yeah, I'd go ahead and, you know, discuss it. The movie we're talking about is his cartoon movie, The Haunted World of El Superbisto. And uh, this movie, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, either you're on the train or you're not. Um, you're going to be split right down the middle. Either people are going to love this movie or they're going to hate it. Personally, I really enjoyed it. I thought this movie was a lot of fun. I really had a good time with it. It's 77 minutes. It goes really by really quick. The story is fast and furious. And uh, it's interesting. And uh, I guess I could kind of sum it up. Wild, weird, and wonderful. But, um, you know, personally, I enjoy this movie a lot. Like I said, I know a lot of people don't. But anyway, um, yeah, the movie is uh, written by Rob Zombie and Tom Papa, the comedian right there, playing the voice of Super Bisto. I'd be willing to bet you probably, though, that I don't think, you know, Papa really had so much input into the script. I think he just more like... I imagine Zombie wrote most of the stuff. And Papa probably just wrote like a lot of his lines, and a lot of his dialogue, and everything else. Because you know, Super Beasto, as he's referred to in the movie, he does talk a lot. So I imagine there's probably a lot of improvisation. You know, him coming up with lines and things like that for the character. But but anyway, so uh, you know, the story is pretty simple. It's uh, based off of a you know, aside from being a musician and you know a filmmaker, Rob Zombie, he's also created a number of uh, comic books and. El Super Bisto was one of them. And as you can see, he's a luchador, which, yeah, I mean, Rob Zombie is a thing about luchadors. And, uh, you know, I guess he's either, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's a big fan of, uh, oh, what was the character? Samson, you know, or either that or else he just really likes, you know, luchadors, you know, uh, Spanish wrestling. I don't know. But uh, anyway, the story is pretty basic. Uh, you got. You know, basically, the world in which this takes place in is inhabited by monsters and horror icons, and you're going to see that in a, in this movie. There are, you know, there are so many horror references in this movie that it's unbelievable. <clears throat> I mean, the very beginning of the movie is literally, um, basically, Rob Zombie redoing the introduction to James Whale's Frankenstein. The only difference is, is you know... Um, you know, when the announcer comes out, you know, he says, you know, Mr. Rob Zombie would like to, you know, give a word of friendly warning. You know, we're about to tell, tell the tale of El Super Bisto. You know, it may shock you. It may horrify you. So you get you get the idea. You see where it's going. And then basically, like I said, the world in which this movie takes place in is the whole world is inhabited by monsters and horror icons. You're going to see pretty much every single one of them. You're going to see Jason Voorhees in here. You're going to see uh, Michael Myers. Of course, in this ver in this movie, the version of Michael Myers that Rob Zombie uses is his version from his movies. You can tell by the design and the look that it's meant to be modeled after his version of um, Michael Myers. But you got like Jack Torrance. You got the chest burster from Alien. <clears throat> you got so many all these horror characters and you're going to, you're going to notice them. Um, hell, even at one point, even, uh, baby Otis and captain Spaulding from, you know, his movies house of thousand courses, devil's rejects, even they appear. And yes, you know, the late great Sid Haig does do the voice of captain Spaulding and, um, Bill Mosley comes in, does the voice of Otis. And, uh, but yeah, you never really, uh, even though the character of baby is in the movie, you never hear her talk. I, I don't know if that's because right now Sherry Moon Zombie is lending her voice to this character, Susie X. But, okay, the storyline goes as this. In the world, you know, um, El Super Bisto, he's considered something of a superhero, a man of action. Um, when he's not, you know, saving the world, fighting monsters, things like that. He's pretty much, you know, making art films, as he calls them, which basically is porn. And then... Um, and the the opening scene, I think, is pretty funny because you have him doing this. He's doing a three-way scene and, uh, you know, the women turn into monsters. You know, one of the women is voiced by 
Cassandra Peterson, Elvira. The other one is voiced by Dee Wallace. So it's a pretty funny scene. Um, and pretty much like everybody you could think of that Rob Zombie knows is doing a voice in this movie. So like I said, you had those two. You know, you got this, you know, uh, Sherry Moon Zombie, obviously. Um, Rosario Dawson, you know, she does a voice in here. Brian po Posehn, obviously he's doing a voice. Um, the surprise here is Paul Giamatti as Dr. Satan. And I'll get to him in a minute. But uh, yeah, you got like Ken Faree is doing a voice in here. Um, like I said, Bill Mosley, Sid Haig. Uh, who else? Oh, man. Uh, was he, Ken, did I say Ken Faree already? Danny Trejo does a voice in here. So, you know, I mean, pretty much, yeah. I mean, obviously Rob Zombie called in all of his friends to come in and, and do the voices for this movie. Even Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey Lew the late, great Jeffrey Lewis and uh, uh, Lou Temple, they you know, show up again and, you know, as Banjo and Sullivan. Um, but really like Jeffrey Lewis, his main character is the elevator operator. And that cracked me the hell up. Um, you got Tom Kenny, who everybody knows, you know, the voice of SpongeBob. He does the voice of uh, the ape. And uh, so anyway, so um, yeah. So Super Beasto, he's doing his thing. Meanwhile, his sister, Susie X is, you know, she's fighting, you know, Nazi zombies and she's fighting Nazi werewolves and she's saving the world and all this kind of stuff. And she has this motor, she has this robot named Murray and Murray is basically, he's something of a transformer. He can transform into a submarine. He can transform into a spaceship. He can transform into a motorcycle, whatever she needs him to transform into. He can do this. And the thing is, is, is what's really funny is, um, why she built a ro I mean, the thing is, is they do it. They do announce in this movie that that Susie X built the character. She she built this character of Murray. And for whatever reason, she gave him the biggest sex drive you've ever seen, even though everything with her is all tease. You know, she's constantly teasing him. And, you know, Murray, a lot of his dialogue is telling Susie how much that he loves her and he desires her. He wants her. He wants to be with her and everything else. And he's, you know, just so like devoted to her and things like that. And uh, so anyway, so this is all going on. And then what ends up happening is the character of Dr. Satan, voiced by Paul Giamatti, uh, and he does a great job. He's really... I'd have to say Giamatti is pretty much kind of a show stealer here. He really does kind of, he kind of does take over the movie. You know, when he shows up, he really does command your attention as Dr. Satan. But the character of Dr. Satan, he's basically, he's going to fulfill uh, a satanic prophecy. And he's trying to find this woman who's going to be his bride. And she bears the mark. And the mark is basically kind of like the, the 666, like what you would see Damien, you know, have on his, have on his head in the omen. But in this case, it's on a butt, a woman's butt, and we find out it's actually on the butt of Velvet Von Black, who is voiced by uh, uh, Rosario Dawson here. And so <clears throat> uh, they find out that it's her, that she does bear the mark. And so he, you know, so Dr. Satan orders this ape that he has working for him, which he put a screw in his head to basically control him. And um, the ape, though... Like I said, voiced by Tom Kenny, and he's he has a British accent. He's very proper and refined, and and uh, you know he's talking about like he cooks gourmet food and all this other kind of stuff. <clears throat> and then, um, <clears throat> sorry, my throat's dry. And so he sends the ape to go kidnap her and bring her back to you know make him make her his bride. Well, Bisto, he you know he uh, sees. Velvet Von Black, and he is so determined he's going to get with her. And, you know, when he goes to try to see if he can woo her with his charms, I guess you could call them, um, which basically is, you know, like one of those hats that holds two cans of beers with the you know, with the hose going down and flowers. And uh, so, you know, he sees the, you know, he sees the monkey trying to take, take Velvet Von Black, but, you know, uh, ultimately at first he thinks they're just having some kind of weird kinky sex thing. So he's getting ready to go. And then he's like, Oh, wait a minute. You know, wait a minute. Yeah. She's being kidnapped. And so, <clears throat> so anyway, so, you know, she, uh, he goes and, um, you know, the monkey takes off with her. She takes her back to Dr. Satan and, you know, they're getting all this thing ready that they're going to, you know, get married. So what ends up happening is that Bisto, uh, basically just decides he just wants to kind of fart around. He's, you know, he's not really the best superhero in the world, even though he's 
many people see him as the best superhero. Many people categorize him as the best superhero. But what he ends up doing is he calls his sister, Susie X, and her robot, um, uh, Murray, to come in and help. And basically, they kind of do all the, they do all the hard stuff. They do all the legwork. And he just kind of farts around. And a lot of it is um, <clears throat> a lot of it is just him just whenever whenever he's um, you know being a hero or something like that, or he ends up saving the day. A lot of it is just he ends up just kind of lucking into it, you know. But uh, you know, I'm gonna try not to give away too much more. But but like I said, ultimately you you kind of stuck with. Um, Super Beasto and, you know, um, Susie X, they have to stop Dr. Satan before he can, you know, complete his ritual and uh, make Velvet Von Black his bride because once she becomes his bride, he's going to, you know, uh, he's going to become all powerful and he's going to take over the world. And uh, there's, and the thing is, though, it's like if you are a horror fan, though, I would definitely say, yeah, you might want to check this out just in case because there are so many horror references there. Like I said, there's a reference to Frankenstein. There's a reference to Carrie. There's all kinds of stuff going on in here. And, uh, you know, this movie really is kind of a, a horror lover's dream, you know. And, um, you know, if you wanted a good horror cartoon, you know, I would say this is it, you know. Um, Rob Zombie's humor, I'm going to be honest, isn't for everybody. Personally, I like it, like I said, but I can't guarantee this movie is going to appeal to everyone. But <clears throat> personally, I thought it was a lot of fun. I, I thought some of the jokes were pretty funny. Um, this movie does have some uh, replay value for me. I've watched it a few times. And um, yeah, it's just it's a Rob Zombie movie that, uh, you know, it doesn't get a lot of love. And I, I kind of wish it would get, you know, a little more love and affection that it's been getting. But um you got it you know you got a great cast here they're all doing good with the voices uh rosario dawson is velvet von black she gets in some good funny lines um <clears throat> trying to think of one right offhand you know uh you know when the ape kidnaps her and everything else and she farts you know and he's all like oh ma'am you are disgusting she's all don't fret you know that shit smell good he's like oh the plowman's lunch <clears throat> but um you know uh yeah, you know, you got a great cast here. You know, you got, like I said, everybody here. You got, you know, Tom Papa, Sherry Moon Zombie, Rosario Dawson, Paul Giamatti, Brian Posehn, uh, Danny Trejo, uh, Sid Haig, Bill Mosley, you know, all that, Guinea Ken Faree, all that, so on and so forth. You know, fun little voice by Elvira, fun little voice by Dee Wallace, everything else. So, yeah, I would definitely say give this a shot, you know. This is, you know... To me personally, that's the way I feel about this cartoon. It's like, it is a cartoon by a horror fan for the horror fans. And, you know, just, I don't know. I say give it a shot. See if you, you know, see if you could get into it. And it's sad that this movie really didn't take off more because I would have liked to see more of this. But who knows? Maybe someday. You never know. So, all right. So anyway, so that's it. Yeah, I can't say too much more without giving away the plot, which I don't want to do. but. Um, you know, one of my favorite lines from this movie, though, too, is uh, Dr. Satan, where he's all like, love is a battlefield. Ah, oh, the wisdom of Benatar. I don't know why that just cracks me up. But anyway, so that's going to do it. So if anybody took the time to watch this, I thank you for doing it. I appreciate you for doing it. I also hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Body Bags channel. Um, we got a different reviewer for every day of the week. I'm normally the Saturday reviewer. We got great guys. Everybody's doing great stuff. And uh, yeah, please, you know, check out the other videos and uh, come back and, you know, enjoy. So everybody take care. Have a good day and uh, I'll see you later. Bye bye.